Okay, now I've cleaned the board off, and we want to go to an operation using these things. So let's go back for just a moment to exponential expressions. Now you may want to ask, so why do we, what is the point of this? Exponential expressions, and I'm going to put operations. Operations of multiply and divide. Okay, so now you can go back and you'll stop this and copy this down because the more, you, if you write it down, it helps your mind to imprint it there so it will stay. So we're going to talk about multiply I should have had an L here. Multiply and divide. So This is what we're talking about. So here's the rules. See, math is all rules. And if you follow the rules, you can do the work. So this tells us that if we want to multiply and divide exponential expressions, there's some rules. Rule one. It only applies when the base numbers are the same. Only when base numbers are the same. Kind of like common denominators. So now what does this mean? It means, for example, if I had two, it's a bad marker, if I had two to the third power multiplied by two to the fifth power, I could do that because the base numbers are both two. If one was two and one was six, see, I couldn't do it because they wouldn't be the same. But if the base numbers are the same, which here they are, I'm going to circle them so you can see that they're the same. That means I can multiply. And how do I multiply? If I multiply two exponential uh, factors and the base is the same, I keep the base, which is two, and I Add the exponent, so this will be 8. So I add exponents, okay? So if I have 2 to the 3rd power times 2 to the 5th power, that's 2 to the 8th power. But that, you say, is pretty simple because it makes sense because 2 to the 3rd power means 2 is going to be used as a factor 3 times. 2 to the 5th power means that 2 is going to be used as a factor 5 times. So if 2 is a factor 3 times and 2 is a factor 5 times, that means 2 will be a factor 8 times. That's pretty simple. So when you get multiplication problems, this is what you can do. So if I give you another example, 5 to the 4th power times 5 to the 8th power. You know that's 5 to the 12th power because I keep the base and I add the exponents. So I add exponents here. Multiplication means add. Division means subtract. So I'm going to put here multiplication, add. And you know add refers to the exponents, not the, the base number. Here, division, subtract. And this is, is the exponent. I'm going to put EXP for ex, exceptional or exponent. 
And this applies only to the exponent, not the base number. So multiplication, add exponents. Division, subtract exponents. So we got it. So let's say, for example, I said I have 2 to the fifth power divided by 2 to the third power. That's going to be 2 to the second power because I have to subtract the exponents. I keep the base. 2 to the second power, which we know is 4 because that means 2 is going to be used as a factor twice. So if I had here 5 to the 12th power divided by 5 to the 8th power, you know that's 5 to the 4th power because 12 take away 8 is 4. 5 to the 4th power. So if you get problems, division, you can see it. Division is subtract exponents. Multiplication, add exponents. So this will get us started. Now here's a trick that you have to be looking for when you do this kind of problem. It doesn't make it any harder, but it makes it a little bit different when most students think about it. But it's not really different at all, so I'm gonna erase this. So we could show division in other ways. See, I could show division like this. Or I can show division like this. 5 to the 12th power divided by 5 to the 8th power. So I can show a fraction where this line means divided by. That's what that line means in English. This little line means divided by. D-I-V-I-D-E-D -I -E by. That will be helpful to us. This is 5 to the 12th power divided by. This means divided by just like it does here. So here, I have 5 to the 12th power divided by 5 to the 8th power. So the bases are both 5, so I can do it. So I subtract because this division means subtract. So 12 take away 8 is 4. 5 to the 4th power. Now I want to go one step further than this still because there's one other thing that you'll come across that requires some attention. Let's say I had this multiplication. 2 to the third, 2 to the fifth. So what if it was written like this? 2 to the third power times 2 to the 5th power, and then that whole quantity was raised to the 3rd power. So what would that mean? I can look at this in two ways that I'm familiar with already. This 3 tells me that this factor, this whole thing is going to be used three times. 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 5th, to make three times of that. So let me erase this and show you what happens here. Because it looks confusing to most people the first time they see it, but it's really not that complicated. Once we take our time and look at it carefully, and read it for what it says. So, let's say I'm going to rewrite this just so it'll be in the right order. Here's my problem. I hope this is dry enough. Not quite. 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 5th, times 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 5th. So you see now what I've done 
is to take this quantity and use it as a factor three times. Here's the, the first time, the second time, and the third time. That's what the exponent tells me. In this case, the base number is a little bit confusing, but the exponent tells me that whatever that base number is, in this case, is 2 to the third power times 2 to the fifth power. That's going to be used as a factor three times. So what I did is wrote down the three factors, one, two, three. So now let's see how we can work with this. Two to the third power times two to the fifth power, the, the bases are both two, so I add the exponents. So this is really two to the eighth power. And so is this, two to the eighth power. And so is this, 2 to the 8th power. So what if I multiply 2 to the 8th power times 2 to the 8th power times 2 to the 8th power? I have 2, and I add the exponents. So what is 8 plus 8 plus 8? That's 3 times 8, so that's 24. So all of this is 2 to the 24th power. Now, there's a sh I could do these problems just like this, but there's a shorter way. It's a little tricky, but you can do it. So if I say, if I pretended like there was no three here, I know that two times, two to the third power times two to the fifth power is really two to the eighth power, because I add these two exponents. 3 plus 5, I add those exponents. Now since I have to raise that to the third power, I would, instead of writing 1, 2, 3, I could simply multiply this 3 times this 8. So if I have to raise an exponent to another power, instead of Adding the exponents, I multiply. So I multiply 3 times 8 gives me straight 2 to the 24th power. See, it saves me these steps. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and I end up with 224. So if I have to raise an exponent to a power, I'll multiply the exponent times the other exponent instead of adding because you see multiplication is nothing but a shortcut to addition. So here we did it the long way and we added eight plus eight is 16 and we added 16 plus eight is 24. So I had that three times, right? One, two, three. So here I just take the three and take a shortcut and multiply it by eight instead of adding eight plus eight plus eight. That's three times. So I can multiply three times eight and I get there quicker. So that's my addition, I mean my multiplication and division of exponential expressions. So I'm gonna stop right here, clean the board one more time and then we'll, we'll continue. So here we have one problem. Five squared raised to the fourth power, divided by five to the sixteenth power. So what does this say? Five squared raised to the fourth power means I could write this expression four times or I could simply multiply four times two. Because if I write this four times, I have two plus two plus two plus two will make eight. Or I could just simply say five to the eighth power by multiplying four times this two gives me eight. Divided by, let me write that divided by this way, five, 16. I could do it that way, but I wanna do it this way to show you a little bit simpler. So, now I get into a situation where the number I'm subtracting is larger than the number I'm subtracting from. 
So when I have 5 and 5, I could do it. Division means subtract. So I got 8 take away 16 is going to result in a negative 8. So now I have 5 to the negative 8 power because 16 is larger than 8. I'm going to come back to that and show you the other thing I was talking about. So we'll come back to this. I'll save it just like that. If we don't come back to it right now, it'll still be saved on the tape and I can come back to it the next time. So two to the fifth power over six to the third power raised to the seventh power. So I could write this seven times, right? Seven times because that's what this says. Or I could multiply seven times five and seven times three because that's what it will be if I write it seven times. So I can just simply work that out and say this is 2 to the 5th to the 7th power. I'll multiply 7 times 5. And what is that? 2 to the 35th power divided by 6 to the 3rd times 7 will be 6. And 7 times this 3 is 21, where this is 35. So there's nothing else I can do with this because my base numbers are not the same. So that's as far as I can go. What about this one? I could write 3 squared 5 times and add the exponents, or I could leave 3 squared 1 time and multiply by the exponent. So in this case, I'll multiply 5 times 2. I got 3 to the 10th divided by 3 to the 10th. So in this case, my base numbers are the same. So I'll have 3. But I'll have to subtract because I'm dividing. So 10 take away 10 is 0. Now this is important for me to tell you right here. Anything raised to the zero power equals this number, one. So if you have 10 to the zero power, that's one. If you have uh, five to the zero power is one. Anything raised to the zero power is, is one because it's that base number not used as a factor any time. So that becomes one. I'll show you how to make that make sense later. But for right now, you'll just accept it as a rule. But I can show you why it works. So right now, it's the rule of zero exponent. That'll help you. And sometimes there's a lot of tricky questions because they have a zero exponent in it that they know students will overlook. So you'll make get those answers wrong. So for right now, we'll just say it's the rule of zero exponent. And that's what will work for us. So what I'd like you to do now as a follow up to this, you go back to the tape. You take your time and write down all the definitions, write down all the words that we use, and try to write down for yourself the rules that we are following in your notebook so they'll always be there. And then you'll go to Study Island and you'll work on 3A, which is exponential expressions. So I'm going to put SI for Study Island. Study Island work will be 3A and 3B. So you'll try to, it'll give you 10 questions, but you'll, if you can get 60% would be great right now. That's your first time. 
70% is passing. 80% would be phenomenal. So even if you get lower than 60%, you'll keep working up. So that's all we'll do for right now. I'm gonna make, organize this, these videos, put them together and put them on my YouTube channel as number two because number one video is already up there so you could go get it it's an introduction and uh, this will be your second video and I'll just keep going until you'll find it says eighth grade second or video number two or eighth grade number two and for those that are in seventh grade as I say seventh grade number one number two sixth grade will be six grade six, one, two, three, and so forth. So just go over it as much as you need to until you get it straight in your mind. And if you have questions, of course, we're going to help you with those anyway. So this is Sunday night. I'm signing off and you enjoy yourself and uh, school is tomorrow. Bye-bye.